They keep it on the pitch. They pitch it to the left side and drive it for the touchdown. Mississippi's made Ballard off the option series. Ralph wants to throw. Ralph is looking. Ralph is throwing on a post pattern down the field and is caught. And it is a touchdown, Mississippi State. I couldn't be prouder of a group of men. A group of men. I couldn't be prouder of a group of men. What you did, you believed in yourselves. You believed in each other. And I told you when that happened, great things would happen. That's just the start. This is just the start of the great things you can do. The great things you can do this season. The great things you'll do for the rest of your life. was the emotional scene here last week for head coach Dan Mullen and his Mississippi State Bulldogs. A major confidence builder as Mississippi State defeated Georgia for their first SEC win. And their next step is our Saturday matchup for SEC College Football Saturday as Mississippi State takes on Alcorn State. Don't those pancakes look good coming off the griddle? A morning game here in Starkville, Mississippi. Hi, everybody. Bob Rathbun and Tim Koch welcoming you to our coverage. No doubt, Tim, a fantastic win for Mississippi State here last week. But for the coaches and staff, they had that one in the rearview mirror Sunday morning. They sure do. And for Dan Mullen, it was his biggest victory here in his two years at Mississippi State. But if you want to get to uh, take the next step and get to a championship level, you have to clean some things up offensively, Bob. They've had fumbles. They've had interceptions. They've had drop passes. And those are the things today that they want to get cleaned up and work on moving into the uh, rest of their schedule. They look to clean up some of those miscues in this game today. The defense, however, has been rock solid. Manny Diaz has done an outstanding job here of implementing a aggressive attacking blitzing defense and they're a hard hitting unit that likes to create turnovers. KJ Wright with another outstanding game last week against Georgia revved up and raring to go today against an Alcorn State team that comes into this one unbeaten at 3 and 0 and we'll have a chance to see one of the most unique stories in college football their quarterback Brandon Bridge comes to them from the great white north of Canada and he has taken over as the starting quarterback at Alcorn. He's done an outstanding job so far and I'm excited to see this young man play. He's, he's really athletic. He's six foot five. He likes to run the football. He wants to throw the deep passes. So it'll be a hard task for him today going against this Mississippi State defense. That's our matchup today. Mississippi State against Alcorn State. A morning game here in Starkville, Mississippi. Donuts and the traditional tailgate fair. It's game time in Starkville. Got some good eating this morning. Bulldogs going to beat Alcorn State, baby. You better believe it. Go Bulldogs. Good, good morning. morning. Hi. Well, this is where it all starts at Regions, where we build each of our customers a better banking experience. Here, we're working on something really special in our family department. Hey, Mike. Hey, Sam. Bell works. Love that bell. Regions recognizes the unique needs of families, and we want to make sure you have exactly what you need, from the right checking account to a mortgage to loans for just about anything. Those are for the kids, Mike. Oh. So if you're ready for a bank that can give your family the financial freedom you want, switch to Regions. The Braves are going to be taking on the Bulldogs in perfect weather this afternoon. Your kickoff temperatures into the low 70s, but because it's still early in the afternoon, those temperatures are going to climb, and you're going to have the sunshine all game long and into the early evening as well. Enjoy it. All right, Katie, we'll certainly do that, and thank you very much. Our Wendy's texted in question for the day. Who is the best NFL quarterback to come out of a Mississippi college? Is it Brett Favre, Archie Manning, Eli Manning, or Steve McNair? You can send your vote to South at 76884. Remember, please, that message and data rates may apply, and we'll keep you posted throughout the course of the afternoon. But right now, let's get you back. Football, Bob and Tim with a play-by-play -play story, guys. Thank you very much, Fred. It is indeed picture perfect weather conditions here in Starkville, Mississippi, for this morning kick between Mississippi State and Alcorn. And the Bulldogs take the field.
We are fast approaching our 11.08 local time kickoff. I'd like to welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, Jen Hildreth. And Jen, the coaches and staff are up early to get the Bulldog credit. Well, Bob, they had to get up early just like we did this morning. This is Mississippi State's first day game of 2010. And as I know, you and I can both attest, we heard some loud knocking, some music in the hallways of our hotel right around 7 a.m. That's also where the Mississippi State players were staying. That was their wake-up call. And Dan Mullen and his staff wanted to make sure these guys started the day off with a lot of energy, no slumped shoulders. So this is how they had to adjust their schedule. As I said, it all started at 7 a.m. They had some chest bumps in the elevator and route to their team walk. Pre-game meal at 8, 920 walk through on the field, and then here they are, ready to go, or at least the coach is certainly hoping these guys will be ready. Although I tell you, I talked to some players yesterday and was surprised when senior linebacker K.J. Wright told me he was excited for the early start. So, Bob, we'll see how that goes in just a few minutes. Okay, Jen, Tim, you've played in these morning games. What's it like for the players? It's different. It's a different routine, Bob. You know, especially they've been playing, they're used to playing night games so far this year. So it just changes your whole routine from your pregame meal to the way you prepare. So you just got to be energetic when you wake up in the morning to get to the stadium and realize you got a football game to play. The head coach is Ernest Collins Jr. of Alcorn. His ball club comes into this one 3 and 0, a Denver native. He has coached at major programs at Kansas and is resurrecting this brave program in the Southwest Atlantic Conference. Dan Mullen is in his second season as the head man at Mississippi State and his Bulldogs looking to string some wins together. They have two non-conference games today and then next weekend at Houston before they jump back into the SEC in Gainesville against Florida. Mississippi State won the toss and they have elected to receive Alcorn is set to kick off. And back deep, number 15 is Maurice Langston for the Bulldogs. Tom each London. And we're underway from Starkville. A short kick fielded at the 34. And Mississippi State will start from its 41-yard line. The quarterback of the Bulldogs is Chris Ralph coming off his best game in a Bulldog uniform. He had an outstanding game last week, and he, and he went the whole way, Bob. That's what I found interesting. They've been using a two-quarterback system a lot this year, but Chris Ralph went the whole way and got a huge victory for his team. Ralph last week became the first Mississippi State player to pass and rush for 100 yards in a game since 2000 and directed a marvelous 93-yard drive in the fourth quarter that clinched that victory over Georgia. Pumpkins. Chance takes it near midfield. Let's take a look at our Al Alcorn State defensive key players. Impacts on the edges with Taylor and Morris, Tonye and Cragen, the top tacklers at their linebacking spots. Second and five. of the day is good to Clark to the 47 of Alcorn. Ralph came into the day hitting 58% of his passes this season. Clark, the young man who made the clinching touchdown catch last week against Georgia. Bumpers. as he gets to the 23-yard line. As, as you can see, Bob, they're trying to get Chad Buffus involved in this football game early. Already a reverse use with him, and now they line him up at quarterback, a direct snap, and just let him use his athletic ability and get this offense moving early. A 24-yard pickup. Buffus, the sophomore from Tupelo, Mississippi, was an all-conference freshman team member a year ago. Ralph and incomplete. The intended receiver was Rico Sanders. Let's take a look at today's keys to the game, and they are brought to you by Ford. 
Uh, for Mississippi State, it's get off to a fast start. You don't want to get it, you know, come out slow. It's an early kickoff. Get get the momentum going early. And for the defensive side of the football, it's maintain your rush lanes on the mobile quarterback, Brandon Bridge. Nick Ballard stretches to the 20. Ballard continues to come on strong, Tim, as the key running back in this attack. He sure has, Bob, and he, last week he had a great game, and he's kind of taken more of the workload over for this Mississippi State running attack. Played his high school football in Pascagoula, Mississippi. Went to the junior college route, and now his debut season here at Starkville. Third and seven. When we talked to Dan Mullen this week, he said he wanted to improve the passing from the pocket. Ralph has been really good outside the pocket with runs, uh, sprint out passes, those type of things. But he wants to improve the play on the drop back passes, and they're doing that early in this football game. Just the fifth catch this season for Chris Smith, and Ralph right on target to start this game. First and 10. Just outside the 10 yard line. Ballard. Strong surge takes it inside the five and down to about the four yard line. Ballard last week. A workhorse against the Georgia Bulldogs, two rushing touchdowns. In fact, Mississippi State has gotten a TD from Ballard each of the first four games. And outstanding in the red zone. The Bulldogs looking to punch it in second and two. Well, throwing wide open touchdown. Pumpers. For Mississippi State, Bob, this is exactly the way you wanted to start this football game. Get the opening kickoff, take it down, and punch it in the end zone. You got your go-to guy, Chad Bumpus, the football three times on that drive and getting him off to a great start. And the extra point is perfect. Sean Brockley putting it down. Chris Ralph with the touchdown pass to Chad Bumpus, 7-0 Bulldogs. Pass avocados with today's kickoff from Starkville. And you're looking at Chad Bumpus of Mississippi State who just caught a three yard touchdown pass from Chris Ralph. Bumpus third touchdown cast catch of 2010. And Dan Mullen and the Bulldogs on top seven nothing with 11 51 to play in the opening quarter. Derek D. Pasquale with the win. And excellent special teams coverage by Mississippi State. Let's take a look at our Toyota quarterback for Alcorn, and that is Brandon Bridge, a true freshman from the Toronto suburb of Mississauga, Ontario. An exciting football player, Bob. Alcorn, Alcorn State will bring an option spread style attacks. You'll see Brandon Bridge running the option. Also, he likes to throw the football down the field. And with him in that backfield is workhorse running back Gabe Nash. And Nash is hit immediately and dropped for a loss back at the 10-yard line. Josh Boyd coming through to make the first play of the day for the MSU defense. For Mississippi State, this is the perfect start. Not only offensively, you go down and get a touchdown, you have great kickoff coverage, and then you blow a play up in the backfield on your first defensive play. So excellent start for Mississippi State. 
Ernest Collins knows full well the speed is going to be a big factor for Mississippi State against his team today. And a run for Gabe Nash takes it out near the 20 yard line. We mentioned Josh Boyd a moment ago, our Toyota defensive key players for Mississippi State. Today they're moving Boyd from straight up off the nose to what they call a, the three technique, which means he'll line up more off the shoulder of the offensive lineman, get him a little more one-on-one. -on -one. And we've talked about K.J. Wright and Chris White outstanding. They do no wrong at linebacker for Mississippi State. That's, That's an excellent group of linebackers, like you said, about K.J. Wright leading the way. The six. That time, Corey Broomfield came crashing in from the secondary. Another excellent start there by the defense. You get them pinned back a little bit. The thing you want to do is get them three and out to give your offense great field position back. And you don't want to let them get first downs and get out of there and kind of flip the uh, field position. So excellent job by the Mississippi State defense. Alturo Tamayo, a junior from California, is the punter. Only one man deep for Mississippi State, but they do not come to pressure. And Chad Bumpus angles near midfield to catch it. Stepping out at approximately the 43 yard line, a 40 yard punt and a 10 yard return. 934 first quarter at Starkville, 7 0 Mississippi State. How durable is Quaker State? We just tested Quaker State motor oil that had driven thousands of miles in New York City taxis. And even when it was ready to be replaced, that used Quaker State still passed the wear protection, rust protection, and viscosity retention tests for brand new oil. Extra protection when you need it most. That's Quaker State. Real, durable oil. It takes someone special to wear a college football uniform. Besides a passion for the game itself, it requires dedicated commitment, intense preparation, and pure, raw talent. Thank you, Fred, here in Starkville. A 7-0 lead for the home team. And now they've got the football first and 10 at the Alcorn 43-yard line. Well, swings it to Bumper. First down, Bulldogs at the 28. A 15-yard gain for Chad. It's become pretty obvious, Bob, that the, the goal for this Mississippi State offense is to get the ball to Chad Bumpus early and often. They've went to him four times now already on two drives. Had the touchdown moments ago. Bumpus, his second catch, and 19 yards. Direct snap. Comes to Ladarius Perkins. Redshirt freshman from Greenville, Mississippi. Second and seven now. And Ralph is back in. And Perkins breaks out as a wide receiver. Plenty of time, but batted at the line. And incomplete, nearly intercepted. This Alcorn State defense is a team that has had a lot of interceptions this year, Bob. Eight already on the season, so they're 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 no stranger to getting interceptions, getting turnovers, and creating a lot of bad plays for the other team's offense. Josh Cragen, 13, the linebacker, nearly came up with that interception. As you look at defensive coordinator Zach Shea, Malcolm Taylor was the man who batted the ball at the line of scrimmage. Third and seven. to the 19 
He needed to get to the 18 for the first down. No decision time here for Dan Mullen and company. What to do on fourth down? It looks like they're going to go for it, and they did this a couple times last week, Bob, and were successful with it both times. Three for four, and one of the biggest conversions is that Georgia game you talked about, Tim, right. on that 93-yard drive to clinch the game in the fourth quarter. Look at that line serve. Outstanding running by Perkins, but the big guys up front made it possible. Just as you said, Bob, the offensive line gets off a great low driving blocks, and the tailback just gets right up in there. Perkins, and it's going to be uh, close here. They're bringing out the sticks. The offensive line had its best game last week against Georgia, to be sure. A winning performance in SEC play. So. It is a change of possession as they stretch the chains, and Alcorn will take over on downs. And what a big win for the Alcorn State defense. You know, you have Mississippi State, they get great field position in their own territory, and you hold them with no points, no field goal, no touchdown, and get your offense back out on the field. Hopefully they can get some first downs and flip this field position. Seven thirty two first quarter and a seven nothing lead for Mississippi State second possession of the quarter for all Chase down in the backfield is Gabe Nash. Today's Wendy's texted in question. Who is the best NFL quarterback to come out of a Mississippi college? Brett Favre, Archie, Eli, Steve McNair, an all corn product. South at 76884. Message and data rates may apply. I'll tell you, I'll take any one of those guys, Bob. That's a nice list. The nice thing about all those quarterbacks, a lot of wins. A lot of wins, yeah, that's for sure. A loss of five on the play. It's Alcorn State, Bob, is going to come into this game. They want to milk this play clock. You can see it's down to two seconds already. Swing to Johnson. And Edward over the 20 to about the 22-yard line. They'd like to shorten this game best they can. Exactly, and that, that's the reason. When you're playing against a team that is faster, stronger, bigger than you are, a way to offset that is kind of shorten the game. Keep their offense off the field. Milk this play clock and let the clock tick down. Third down. And there is the play clock as it winds its way. And once again, the Braves taking their time as they come up to the line of scrimmage. The game clock approaching the six minute mark of the first quarter. Two freshman quarterbacks, six foot five, Brandon Bridge, looking to make a play. And that's a first down for the Braves. It appears from here at the 30-yard line as we go down to the field and jam. Bob, I was just thinking, we got to remember when we spoke with head coach Ernest Collins for Alcorn State, and he told us that it's important for his team to execute and to withstand the first few punches. So big first down here for his team as they had to take a few big hits early on, but now something positive perhaps to build on. And their first first down is a step in the right direction. Nash to the 35. Now getting back to the point, Bob, we were talking about milking the play clock. Another thing that does for you when you're playing against a defense, it's such so many different blitz, blitz packages and things like that. It makes them show where they're coming from. So it gives the quarterback a kind of chance to cipher all that out and see where the blitzes will be coming from. Andy Diaz, the defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, and not only Coach Collins, but also offensive coordinator Michael Armour, really looking forward to the challenge of facing Manny's D. <laughs> the 
35, but that's it. Tight end Ryan Singleton was grabbed around the ankle and a gain of about five yards. Uh, no gain, rather, on the play. Today's game is presented in high definition by H.H. H. Gregg. Third and five for the Braves. Coming in, three wins, no defeats, and 2 0 leaders in the Southwestern Athletic Conference's Eastern Division. Play clock at two, but it's a penalty flag. Delay game coming. Kenny Williamson's crew working today's game. Prior to the snap, delay of game, number seven on the offense. Five yard penalty, it remains third down. You might be interested to know how this particular call is made. It's the back judge's call. He looks at the play clock. When it hits double zero, he then looks down to the ground to see if the ball has been snapped. If it's been snapped, then no penalty. But if it's still sitting on the ground, when he looks down, delay a game. Okay, so you get a little extra tick there. And uh, But, you know, when you're a freshman quarterback like Brandon Bridges, those are the things you have to be aware of. I know you're trying to run the play clock down, but you have to get your offense in a little bit more rhythm, a little bit more quicker pace to get that ball snap. Bridge. Oh, nice one-handed grab by Nash. First down, all corn at the 46. You see the athletic ability of Brandon Bridge. What we talked about at the top of the show, he's he can run the football. He's got a very strong arm. And what a heck of a catch by Gabriel Nash right there. And you, you see this team offense with Bob. They have talent. They have athletic players. They just got to, you know, settle into this game and relax and start making the plays that they've been making all season, starting, the game, starting their season out 3-0. They have been improving as this quarter has unfolded. Nash off tackle, a tough yard. And we saw the graphic there, Bob, and first down is key for this Alcorn State offense. They're, they're not getting anything first down, so it's putting them in second long situations, making them a little bit more one-dimensional, and Manny can start bringing more exotic blitzes and those type things on him. Second and nine. The Braves without. A uh, key man in that backfield, Arnold Walker, went down with a knee injury first game of the season. So Nash has had to carry the load. Now the give is to Lewis. The Bulldog defense is hard to beat on a play that works the edges. It really is. This is a fast flowing defense. They have a great group of linebackers like we talked about earlier who can find the football and run and make plays. Now this is a situation where you're in you're in a third and long right here. This is at midfield. This is where Manny is going to bring some type of blitz. So if you're Brandon Bridge you got to be careful here. Get yourself protected and try to make a play down the field. Third and eight. Nice play to drive. Incomplete. And Bridge with some big time pressure. Yeah, you, you, you had to had to expect the pressure right there on third and long. That's what Mississippi State is known for. But this is a win. If I'm if I'm Alcorn State, this is you got a couple first downs. You flip field position. I know you didn't get any points out of that, but you're going to have some. You're going to make Mississippi State drive the long field on you. Broomfield that came up with a third down sack earlier in the quarter is the man that first got to quarterback Brandon Bridge. Alturo to Mile is the puncher. This one will hit. Bumpus grabs it and steps out at the eight. A timeout in Starkville, 128 left. First quarter, 7 0, Mississippi State. The SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by Ford, by Regions Bank, by Academy Sports and Outdoors, and by Geico Insurance. We're back at Starkville. Let's head down to the field to Jen. 
Bob, just as Tim said, to support what he was saying, the Alcorn State sideline very excited after that last sequence, picking up a couple of first downs, the nice long punt. Ernest Collins, even in that boot he's got on his right foot, was walking around uh, his whole team clapping several minutes after the plays were over. And for Mississippi State, Tyler Russell is in at quarterback. And he goes to the air, complete to the 28-yard line. And Chad Bumpus. Tyler Russell, the heralded redshirt freshman from Meridian. Yeah, when Tyler Russell comes into the game, Bob, you're going to see a different style of offense. He's a true drop back pocket passer. He wants to throw the football down the field, as you saw right there. An 18 yard gain. Russell did not take a snap last week against Georgia. To the 34 yard line. Penalty flag. Mississippi State has not had very many penalties called against them this season. Illegal block below the waist on the offense, number eight. The penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. Repeat second down. Mississippi State has been the least penalized team in the SEC through the first four weeks. You know, getting back to Tyler Russell a little bit, Bob, I, I think what's even more impressive than, than his uh, skill sets are his attitude. He was the backup quarterback last week, didn't get any action, but if you listen to what he said, he said he just wants the team to win. He wants to help Chris Ralph out in any way he can when he's on the sideline spotting things out on what the defense is trying to do. So very impressive from a young quarterback to be able to do that. Russell, kid as he throws. Complete to the 35. Chris Smith takes it up to about the 37, 38 yard line. And Tyler Russell with a strong and accurate arm. He sure does, and, and this is uh, this is what you expect out of him. He wants to throw the football down the field and had a penalty offset one of his completions there, and he comes right back and picks it all back up on the next play. 20 yard pickup. First and 10 Bulldogs. Four-yard line. The junior from Oklahoma, Mississippi, tackled by Kenny Roby. Elliott had a 59-yard effort against Memphis earlier this season, but an injury-plagued career after a tremendous high school career. And that will be the end of the period. On a beautiful Saturday morning in Starkville, Mississippi, the Bulldogs back at it as they take on interstate rival in Alcorn State. Our score at the end of one, Mississippi State seven, and the Braves nothing. Embarrassing to say, delicious to eat. It's the Super Rudy Tutti Fresh and Fruity. From Mississippi State University in Starkville, SEC College Football Saturday continues our Jeep game summary through the first quarter. Mississippi State took the opening kickoff, drove down the field, and a touchdown pass from Chris Ralph to Chad Bumpus, and that's where we stand, 7-0. Starting yeah. period number two. All right, you ready? Russell, complete. Through the 40-yard line. Once again, Chris Smith, the receiver. And you can see, Bob, how this offense changes when Russell comes into the game. He has an NFL-type arm. He's got a big league arm, can throw it as hard as anybody, and loves to throw the football deep down the field. Tyler Russell came into the game hitting 63% of his passes. Elliott back to the line of scrimmage. Robert Elliott, ball carry. Tyler Russell, a highly recruited quarterback, got a bird in Mississippi. Gains a yard to the Braves. Had a fabulous day in their first week against Memphis. A huge win to start the season. And working with Robert Elliott in his backfield, they expect great things out of this young quarterback. Buy some time. And upended at the 37. 
That's a smart play by Tyler Russell right there. Great job by Alcorn State defense. Had everybody covered up. So sometimes you just got to take that or throw it away, just or tuck the ball like he did and try to get get all you can get on the ground. Third and six. Pass to the 23 yard line. And Arcido Clark making the tackle was Jason Owens. You gotta be impressed with the accuracy so far, Tyler Russell. He's throwing the football right on target every time. And it's just it's fun to see the, the switch up when Ralph is in the game and when Russell comes in, how different this team can be. And that's that, that's credit to the offensive line of wide right receiver. What? What? To the 17. 52, Tanya Tanya on the stop. Playing six yards to the 17. Game six. What? What's that? Russ over the end zone. Pat it away. Tribune defending. And the Braves are known for their outstanding coverage in the secondary. They've intercepted eight passes in three games. Yeah, they've been great defensively back there, Bob, in the secondary, as you said, intercepting a lot of passes here. Tyler Russell just didn't look him off quite enough. He tried to look it to his left and, and drill one in there back to the right, and, and Tribune just didn't buy it. First incomplete pass by Russell. Touchdown, Bulldog, Ballard. Sean Brockley with the PAT. And with that, a 14-0 lead for Mississippi State. Big Ballard. The touchdown run to put the Bulldogs up two touchdowns. It has the following of a rock star, but the work ethic of a roadie. It shows up to work with something to prove every day. It's not the kind to climb the corporate ladder. But it'll be more than happy to carry a few. Now, Lisa. SEC College Football Saturday is proudly brought to you by your independent auto owners insurance agents. 14-0 Mississippi State leading. Vic Ballard with the touchdown run. And for more on the Junior College All-America, here's Jen. Bob, Vic Ballard has now accounted for seven of the Bulldogs' 15 touchdowns this season. And while he hasn't been the workhorse Anthony Dixon was with this program, nobody expected him to be. What the coaches love about this guy is his consistency. And that applies to every aspect of both who he is as a player and a person. Offensive coordinator Les Kenning said he recruited him out of junior college. He checked to make sure why is he in junior college. And there was really not a bad reason there. He just got overlooked. And now doing well with the chances he's getting, guys. He has scored at least one touchdown in every game as Terrence Lewis on the kick return for Alcorn. That was Lewis on the return. We talked about trying to shorten the game. And the Braves with eight minutes of possession time. Yeah, they're doing a great job of running the clock and those type of things. But at some point, you're going to have to start scoring some points and moving the football, throwing it down the field a little bit more, letting Brandon Bridge use that big arm, take some shots down the field. First to 10 from the 22. Bridge slings and incomplete. Comes at your sidearm. 
He comes out in a little bit sidearm, and, and his coaches have been working with him on that, trying to improve his mechanics a little bit. This is a very young kid. He's 18 years old, Bob, and he has a long way to go. He's, he's raw, but he has all the skill sets, as you can see. So they're just trying to tweak some things mechanically to improve his accuracy. And I can't imagine the adjustment coming from Canadian football, 12 on 12, right. a longer field, deeper end zones, and to come into American football at the college level. Oh, it's a big adjustment, but with this Mississippi State Bulldog defense, the way they blitz, sometimes it probably feels like there's 12 out there. Quarterback keeper, he can run it. Touchdown. See what all the excitement's about. Bob, you know, a lot of people say we're coming into this game that he kind of reminds him of Cam Newton. You know, certainly not as big physically, but he has all the skill sets as far as his running ability and, and ability to not get caught in the open field by those fast defensive backs. As you saw there, he can take it to the house from anywhere. Brandon Bridge with his third touchdown run, and that it's Alcorn State on the scoreboard. Tamayo to attempt the point after. And the kick is good. Point is good. The true freshman from Canada. A 78-yard touchdown run. Brandon Bridge. And Alcorn cuts the Mississippi State lead in half. 14 to 7 in Starkville. Best NFL quarterback to come out of Mississippi. Brett Favre, Archie Manning, Eli Manning, or Steve McNair. You can affect your, uh, your uh, texture uh, response to South. Back to you guys. Thank you, Fred. 14-7 here. Mississippi State to receive the all-corn kick. And over end to Barry at the five. And a solid return. Tim, break down that touchdown run for you. Yeah, as we go back to the play, you see the right tackle, number 75, Willie Riaz, and the, and the linebacker, K.J. Wright, right here. This is the key block that gets this play going and gets Brandon Bridge into the open field. You see the kick out block right here. It creates this lane for Brandon Bridge to get up in. And once he gets in there, it's just athletic ability. It's speed. It's making guys miss in the open field. And you're not going to catch this guy. He, we talked in the opener how fast he is, how elusive he is. And you saw it right there. And that right tackle, Willie Wyatt, a sophomore, with a terrific effort. It turns into a touchdown. 14-7. Tyler Russell still in a quarterback for the Bulldogs. Deep ball for Barry and incomplete. And as this game unfolds, you can sense that the confidence is building in the Braves. It does. And anytime you get a big play like that from your quarterback, Brandon Bridge, you can just feel the confidence from Alcorn State now. Now you see their defenders flying around with a little more pep in their step. Certainly when the offense comes back out, they'll have a little more belief that they can move the football against this Mississippi State defense. Catch by Bumpus. Picks up about four yards to the 34 yard line. Javoris Tribune defending. If you're Mississippi State, this is a very important down right here. I know it's early in the game, but Alcorn State has a little bit of momentum right now. The last thing you want to do is come out and go three and out on the offense and put that hot offense right back out on the field. Russell steps up. And a penalty fly. Pass interference coming against Jamison Knox. Take a look here and see if he got there early. A little late throw. The guy's wide open. Buffus is wide open. And looks Pass like interference on the defense, number 22. The penalty will place the ball at the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. Jamison Knox, a true freshman. 
from Memphis. Mississippi State offensive coordinator, the veteran Les Kenning, calls the game from the press box. In his second season, working with Dan Mullen. Dead ball foul, ball start, offense number three, five yard penalty. It remains first down. So Les now faced with a first and 15. And Les Kidding did such an amazing job last week, Bob, in that Georgia game, calling some outstanding plays, especially on that 93 yard drive that really got that game in the Bulldogs, gave a victory to the Bulldogs. He just made some outstanding calls and set plays up really well. Perkins has nowhere to go. And loses a couple of yards to the 42. It is a very pensive crowd here in Starkville right now. They did not expect to see a 14 to 7 game on the board early in the second quarter. That's for sure. Give the Braves credit. Russell. All day to throw. Incomplete. Smith was out of bounds when he touched it. Final Russell's pass is complete. Intended for Chris Smith. Once again, Javoris Tribune defending for Alcorn State. Important down here for Alcorn State defense. No penalties. You know, Mississippi State's going to try to work the football down the field. There's no pass interference penalties, anything like that. Get your offense back out on the field. Third and long. Russell goes over the middle. Bumpus with the catch, but unable to pick up that first down. So the Braves get a stop on third and long, and the Bulldogs will punt it away. Game nine yards. Fourth down. Hey, let's go. Eve Hutchins, the front. Hutchins has come in, the senior. And he punts it. Their catch is made at the 12 yard line by Edward Johnson. A 35 yard punt. All corn with the football. And the Braves down seven in Starkville. Hi. Well, this is where it all starts at Regions, where we build each of our customers a better banking experience. Hey, let's talk small business. There's some very sophisticated stuff in here. We have everything from business checking to loans for expansion. There's even a Regions cash core analysis. But one of the best things is the personalized advice you'll get from a Regions business expert. Hey, Mary. Hi, Mike. Thanks. She really understands business. Is your small business ready for something better? Switch to Regents. At Polaris, we designed a trail-dominating legend, the Sportsman XP, to lead a new team of smooth-riding trail runners. We made a versatile, powerful, mid-size Ranger, launching a new group of value-minded workhorses. SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by O'Charlie's, by Toyota, and by Hass Avocados. Bob Rath and Tim Couch and down the field, Jen Hildreth with our Schuyler athlete. That's all right, Bob. The Bulldogs just had their first punt of the game, which gives us a chance to tell you about their deep snapper. Giving a little love to special teams. Four-year starter Aaron Feld has already graduated with a degree in business administration. He's pursuing his master's in physical education and is carrying a perfect 4.0 GPA. First down at 10 for the visitors from Lorman, Mississippi. Enrollment 3,583, all Corn State. And right there with the Bulldogs, a 14 7 game. Brandon Bridge is the quarterback. Play clock tips under 10. Bridge incomplete. Edward Johnson was the intended receiver. 
for Brandon Bridge, I'm, I'm impressed with his poise in the pocket. Mississippi State is showing him a lot of different looks at the line of scrimmage. You can see him walking up to the line, kind of sliding his protections, talking to his offensive line, communicating. Now, I know the throw got away from him there. He had a guy wide open, but you have to be impressed with his poise for such a young football player. Manny Diaz, the defensive coordinator here in Starkville. His dad, Manny Sr., former mayor of Miami. the carry time out. Was a timeout before First the time snap. This, half. this is a 30 second timeout. They'll take it with them. 10 13 to play before halftime. Mississippi State leads it 14 7. Defensively, they've done a terrific job, Tim, this season, keeping the opponents out of the end zone. They had the breakdown and the great play, to be sure, by Bridge and uh, his offensive line mate, Willie Rias. But Mississippi State with a challenge here to uh, harness another mobile quarterback, and they've seen quite a few in the early part of the season. They really have. If you go back, they've played Cam Newton from Auburn. They've played Jordan Jefferson from LSU, and all these mobile quarterbacks have gave them a little trouble so far this year. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Terrence Lewis. And he threw a bullet, did Young Bridge. He sure did. And that's that's the catches you have to make if you want to stay in this football game with Mississippi State. Terrence Lewis had an opportunity to pull this down. It's a little high, but you know, those are the type of plays if you want to win and stay in these type of games, you got to come down with those those catches. Third and ten. Alcorn State two of four on third down to this game. And the sack back to the three yard line. Nico Whitley who has made a habit of making big plays for this Mississippi State defense comes through. And once again, it's third and long. You know you're backed up in your own territory. Mississippi State is going to bring pressure. And Brandon Bridge steps up, tries to elude it, but his own guy, Willie Rice, who threw the good block for him on the last drive, actually got in his way right there. But not a bad thing for him. He didn't force the ball down the middle and get a turnover. Just punt this thing out and see if your defense can stop him again. As a punter, Tamayo, Averages 42 yards per punt, and that's where he is today. Chad Bumpers is the deep man. From Alcorn 42. Takes it to the 30-yard line. A very short field for Dan Mullen and Mississippi State. Dan Mullen's ball club with a Tremendous victory last week against Georgia. One of those victories that you may very well in time look back and see that was a turning point. Yeah, certainly so. And, and it's a stepping stone. Dan talks about stepping stones for the program wins. You know, he's had a lot of moral victories in his first two seasons so far. Now they finally go break through and get a big win versus Georgia last week and set them up for a nice opportunity going into the rest of their schedule. Chris Ralph has come back in at quarterback for the Bulldogs. to the nine yard line and Leon Berry. You know it's it's interesting the way Mississippi State decide how they decide to bring in which quarterback at which time but right now going in, even into last week versus Georgia Chris Ralph is playing good football. It seems like the team is moving a little better when he's in there so if I was the coach I would leave him in and let him 
throw the football down the field and make plays with his legs. First and goal from the seven. His second of the day. Eight forty three left, second quarter. Brockley with the point after. Dad Bumpus has been the featured back today. Sure has, and Chris Ralph made it look easy on that drive. He got the ball back with great field position, threw a couple passes, and he just throws a laser right there, fitting that thing into tight coverage into his go-to guy, Chad Bumpus. Second touchdown reception for Bumpus. As we set the down to Jim. Bob Bumpus, one of those receivers that had to really get thrown into the fire early last season and talking to offensive coordinator Les Kenny, he said he really had to grow up fast and I talked to Chad about that. How's this sound for mature? He said that every time last year Dan Mullen and one of the other coaches would come up to him with some advice and what he could do better. He wrote it down in a notebook so that he could go back and work on it when he had more time in the offseason. Clearly some of that work appears to be paying off for the sophomore receiver. As we mentioned, all SEC freshman team last year when he led Mississippi State in receiving. He's their leading pass catcher so far in 2010. And Chris Ralph growing game by game. It's exciting to see the growth and maturity of Chris Ralph. He was a guy who didn't throw the football particularly well last year. He's improved that in the offseason, and you can see it paying off big for him so far this year. Kick off to Terrence Lewis from the center. And for Mississippi State, Hughes on the special teams. Chris Hughes, a freshman, true freshman from Mobile with the big stick. 8.37 to play, second quarter. As you look at Hughes, it's a way for these uh, redshirt freshmen and true freshmen to earn playing time on special teams. Sure it is, and you know, that's when you're a young football player, you want to do anything to contribute to the team, help the team. That means special teams, whatever you have to do to get out on the field, just make plays when they put you in the game. And tough sledding. 97 Josh Boyd on the bottom of that pile. Also linebacker Michael Hunt coming over. He's getting a lot of playing time in this game today. Third team linebacker. No gain sets up second and 10. You see Alcorn State continuing to milk this play clock and run the clock and getting instructions from the sideline after the coach is looking to see what the defense is trying to line up in it. You got to get Brandon Bridge involved here, whether it's get him on some quarterback draws, get him out in the corner, let him run some sprint out passes, give him options to run or throw. Slink pass to Johnson. To the 24-yard line. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report with Fred Hickman. Scores and highlights from a big day of football in the SEC. Key games not only this afternoon with Kentucky up in Oxford taking out Ole Miss, but Fred will also have the latest on key contests, Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, LSU, and Georgia non-conference game in Colorado tonight. The side. Caught. Terrence Lewis. 
And another tremendous throw by Bridge. Bob, we see this guy just maturing right in front of our eyes, playing against an SEC defense, speed, size. He's coming out relaxed, poised, and throwing the football down the field. And I'll tell you, you can't throw a football any better than this. That's pretty good coverage right there. And he just drops it over the outside shoulder, just like you're taught to do as a quarterback. Perfect throw by Brandon Bridge. 58 yard pass play. Sets up first and 10. In the Mississippi State red zone at the 19. Nash once again hit as soon as he received the handoff. Sean Ferguson, number 99, the junior from Miami. In Mississippi State, what they like to do, once you get into their red zone, Bob, they want to bring a lot of pressure on first down. They know that you want to run the football, so they want to put you in a second long situation and kind of make you a little bit more one dimensional. A loss of three on the play, second and 13. And Bridge out of bounds. Near the 20. And time for today's Napa Auto Parts know how. All court coming in 3 0, first time since 1993. And they had a young man at quarterback named Steve McNair. He turned out to be a pretty good player, didn't he? Yes, he did. You know, some of the same qualities in Brandon Bridge here. You know, an athletic guy who can run around, big, strong arm, physical guy. So certainly Steve McNair has paved the way. And I'm sure Brandon Bridge has looked at some of his old footage and and studied up on how Stephen Mayer got it done at Alcor. Bridge under pressure, throws to the end zone. Touchdown! The catch is made by Ryan Singleton, just inches from the end line, and the Braves have their second touchdown. I'll have to take a look at this ball. It looks like he was pretty close to that end line right there. But again, I can't stress enough. Heck of a throw by Brandon Bridge. Under pressure, falling off his back foot, puts that thing up. And we'll have to take a closer look and see if we can see if he got one foot down. It looked like he did there to me, Bob. And the officials are going to take a look at it. The touchdown catch is under review. Hard to tell there when he when he had possession. We'll see here on this look. He has possession now, and it looks like that foot's off the ground, Bob. I think this one's going to be called back. I don't think he had possession in time to tap that back foot. So the SEC replay officials upstairs taking the same look at it as you are at home. And I agree with you, Tim. I think this one is going to be called back. Yeah, it's very, very close. About as close as you can get to that end line right there. But, you know, heck of a job once again, like I said, Brandon Bridge and his wide receiver, Ryan Singleton. He's their hybrid tight end type of guy. They'll move him around in different spots on the field, create mismatches. So nice effort by those two young men. One thing you can't take away from Ryan Singleton, an outstanding effort. Effort, yeah, that's what you want to see when you're Ernest Collins. Your team comes into an environment like this. It's effort, it's belief, it's knowing you can go out and get the job done no matter who you're playing. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. As they continue the video review upstairs. If it stands, it will be a 21 to 13 game with the extra point coming up. Mississippi State has been so good this season defensively as and Manny Diaz's philosophy is keep them out of our end zone make them kick field goals hold them to three points so if they get in here twice in the first half Bob Manny Diaz is going to be have some choice words for his defensive unit going in the locker room at halftime.
just looks like he, the back foot came up right as he was gaining possession of the football. So it's very close to call, but I think it's going to be back, brought back. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Touchdown. They did not have enough video evidence to overturn it. Well, it was like we said, it's, it's extremely close. I mean, it could have went either way. That's just a matter of if that back foot was down as he gained possession. As the replay officials saw, it was it was apparently tapped down. Alturo Tamayo in to kick the PAT and a very surprising score on the board in Starkville with 540 to play before halftime. Kick hits the upright. No good. Well, we mentioned the name Steve McNair, the late great quarterback from Alcorn State. And you look at his numbers in his career, yards per game still stands through all levels of NCAA football, the best all time. Just an amazing football player, Bob, an amazing competitor. I had an opportunity to play against Steve several times in my career in the NFL. And, you know, as you see the stats, over 16,000 yards in college. The 1994 Walter Payton Award winner. He led his team, the Tennessee Titans, to the Super Bowl where they lost that great game to Kurt Warner and the St. Louis Rams. But what a just a great person and a great NFL career. And you look at some other notable alums. From Alcorn, Alex Haley, history's best-selling African-American author, Edgar Evers, who actually played football at Alcorn. It was Alcorn College in 1948 and a great uh, civil rights activist. And you look down the, the line there at Leslie Frazier and Donald Driver in the NFL and Larry Smith, arguably the greatest basketball player ever to play at Alcorn in a magnificent professional career. Now the school's head basketball coach. Can you see the leaders of the institution enjoying I'm sure every second of this one is it's 21 to 13. I'm sure they are excited what their Braves are doing right now as well as those players down the field. They have a ton of confidence right now. Leon Berry finds an alley. And a solid return out to the 41 yard line. 31 yard return. Joshua Dotson made the special teams tackle. 532 to play in the first half. And Mississippi State with a 21-13 advantage. And Chris Relf stays in at quarterback. Yeah, Chris Relf has had the hot hand in this game. Bring him back out there. He's put the team in the end zone twice. Let him see if he can get another one before they go in the locker room at halftime. Just shy of the goal at the one. Well, we've talked about it all day, Bob. The maturity, the growth of Chris Ralph as a passer. Everyone knew his athletic ability. He could beat you with his legs. He's a big, strong, physical guy, six foot four, 240 pounds. So you know he can run the football and carry a load. But his passing ability, his poise in the pocket. You see him surveying the field, just delivering a really accurate football to his wide receiver, Leon Berry. He has this football team in great timing and rhythm when he's in the game. Hammerhand. Did not get in. The senior. Began his college career at the University of Alabama. Patrick Hammerhand looking to take it into the end zone. Stopped by Josh Cragen. No gain. Second and goal at the one. Actually, the half yard line.
Sean Broccoli. The first penalty flags. Illegal substitution on the defense. Half the distance to go. Replay the try. Second touchdown today for Vic Ballard. He had a seven yard, excuse me, 17 yard touchdown run in the first quarter. Broccoli looking to add the point here with 421 to go before halftime. Kick is good. 28 to 13. You know what I found interesting about this game so far, Bob? We came in talking about how Mississippi State's defense was a strong point of this team, but today, offensively, they are carrying the load. When their defense has given up some big plays, their offenses came out and answered the bell. They have answered every drive. And the 58-yard pass to Berry. Yeah, I see Chris Ruffin starts with pass protection. That offensive line, he had all day to throw the football. And in the secondary for Alcorn State, you just can't cover these fast, speedy wide receivers of Mississippi State that long. Ballard continues to rack up the touchdowns, and Chris Ralph continues to impress at quarterback. Tremendous growth from a year ago. Tremendous growth, Bob, and, and Dan Mullen has to just be so thrilled with his guy. You know, when you're, uh, you have two guys that are kind of rotating in and out, I don't think anything a coach wants more is just for one of those guys to step up and say, hey, this is my football team. I'm the leader of this team, and I'm going to prove it with my play out on the field. And right now, Chris Ralph is doing just that. Derek De Pasquale, the junior, kicking into the wind here. Doss and Caldwell, the deep end. And a return up to the 26 by Doss. Auburn leading ULM 31 to 3. Kentucky with that touchdown lead up in Oxford. And Vanderbilt looking to win on the road up a touchdown at UConn. If, you, if you're Alcorn State here, you got to take, there's are four minutes on the clock. Your quarterback has been throwing the football really well down the field. So give him an opportunity here to drive them down and try to put some points on the board before they go in the locker room. Finally sees a little daylight and takes advantage. And that's a good drive starter right there. When you come out offensively, Michael Armour, you just want to get the chains moving just a little bit on first down. A lot of teams start with this, a draw or a screen on first down, just to get the drive started. And Nash comes off, flexing that shoulder, holding that right arm after a six-yard gain. Jack Caldwell replaces him as the running back. And the hit upon reception delivered by Jonathan Banks. The sophomore from Maven, Mississippi, the fifth leading tackler for the club out of the secondary. First down for the Braves at the 38. Singleton. And another big pass play for Alcorn State. And it's, you know, Brandon Bridge. I just can't say enough good things about this young man. You see him took a big hit right there, Bobby's offensive lineman helping up, but he's, he's such a tough kid, a poised kid. We talked about his poise in the pocket. As you see him stepping up in the pocket, taking a big shot in the back, and that's, that's a late hit right there. That actually should have been flagged. That ball was yes. well out before he took that hit. 99, Sean Ferguson is the man who delivered the blow. But his testimony to his toughness, Bridge stays right in there. Ten seconds on the play clock. 
28-13. And now the Braves are going to take a timeout. Now Bridge is going to get a little bit of attention as we come to the timeout. For more on the quarterback, here's Jim. Bob, I think it's so interesting, you know, Brandon Bridge coming out here and really putting on a fine show for his team. And Tim, you certainly have had a lot of praise for him. And consider this, he visited Elkhorn State only after he had already committed. This is a kid from a pretty, you know, bustling metropolitan metro city. I'm not going to mess my words up. <laughs> from a city outside Toronto, okay? He never even visited. I asked him why. He said Alcorn was the only school that offered him. He didn't want to close any doors. He has taken that attitude all the way here. He said he tries to do everything like a senior would. He's in the film room. Look at the film with coaches. He tries to be a leader, and it's clearly showing in the way that he is so poised out here in the field for his team. It Jen. sure is, Jen, and, and these coaches found a great uh, find in this young quarterback, Brandon Briggs. Jack Caldwell. Nowhere to go, and a loss of the play. Coming through, K.J. Wright putting that helmet back on. K.J. Wright putting together a first-team All-SEC type season. This, this is an NFL talent type guy. K.J. Wright is the best linebacker on this football team and one of the best linebackers in the, all of the SEC. Caldwell remains in as the setback. And Bridge out of the gun. Bridge gets to the sideline. And that stops the clock at 145. Banks ran him out of bounds. Chris White also with pressure, number 50. Chris Ralph doing a good job. I mean, I'm sorry, Brandon Bridge doing a good job of getting out of bounds right here. He just took a big hit in the back. He's probably a little sore. So make sure when you run the football from this point on, these defenders are head hunting him. So when he when he takes tucks the ball and runs, find those sidelines or slide and get down. Having a big first half, 148 pass yards, 75 rush yards. A true freshman on the big stage in an SEC stadium. Incomplete, tipped at the line. And one of the things this staff has been working with Brandon Bridge on is he wants to kind of force the ball, young player, force the ball down the field a little bit, a little bit right there. He had an underneath guy on a crossing route wide open who he could have dumped the football to and he would have been able to sprint to the chains for a first down. Fourth down, field goal try, 43 yards by Arturo Tomorrow. And it is good. So Tamayo adds a field goal. And that is his third of the season. His longest was 52. And all Corn State tacks on three more points against the Bulldogs. 135 left in the half. Digital Network. Content delivery that defines innovation, social connectivity, and instant access to your SEC. The SEC Digital Network. The Mississippi State Bulldog Band getting ready to take the field here at halftime. A 28 to 16 score on the board, and Dan Mullen. Probably didn't see this coming in terms of the way that Alcorn has been able to move the football. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly not, Bob. And Dan Mullen is probably happy on one side of the ball with his offense, the way they've been able to answer drives and score and put points on the board. But his defense is something he thought would be dominant, not just good. He thought they would come out here and dominate this football game. And Brandon Bridge has had, had, had thought otherwise. And he's came out and made a ton of big plays against this defense. Leon Berry from the two. Eight 
yard. First kickoff return for a touchdown this season for Leon Berry, the Stewart record holder in kickoff return yardage. Rockley with the PAT. And for Alcorn State, just what a backbreaker. You know, you just drive down, you make some excellent plays on your last offensive possession. You were able to put three points on the board, and then Leon Berry takes that thing all the way to the house. Just a backbreaking play right there for Alcorn State. One twenty-two left in the second quarter. And Leon Berry getting a well-deserved rest after that coast-to-coast -coast run. Certainly so. That's a, that's a huge play in this football game. You know, anytime you can get points, Bob, going in right before half, that's, that's huge for your football team. 35-16. And everybody coming over to congratulate Leon Berry. He's caught a few passes. Now his signature, a kickoff return for a touchdown. Senior from Griffin, Georgia, Leon Perry. And now, Braves trying to regroup after that stunning development. 122 left, and Mullen Bulldogs didn't accept the kickoff. Wind blowing in on. He passed well as he gets set to pick off. Not as strong as he was in the start of the game. With a 31 points scored in the last seven minutes and 21 seconds of playing time. And this kickoff goes out of bounds for the penalty. And so Alcorn will get that football out at the 40 yard line. And that does not make the coaches happy. Certainly not. And that's a huge mistake by the kicker, giving Brandon Bridge a shorter field to work with and also a minute 22 on the clock. Kick out of bounds. Team. Ball will be placed at the 40 yard line. First down. 122 left before halftime. And those are the type of things that frustrate Dan Mullen. It's the little things. When you're trying to take the next step and get your football team to a championship level, those are the things that you have to eliminate. Kicking the ball out of bounds, offsides, mental errors, those type of things is what drives, keeps coaches up at night, Bob. Gabe Nash, who was shaken up earlier, back in. As Bird goes up the center, and Nash gets the carry. What little success Nash has had, Tim, has been on some cross bucks. But trying to string that play out against MSU's defensive front is a very tough thing. Yeah, it's very hard to do it against okay. MSU's linebackers. They're a fast-flowing type team. Now, if you want to counteract that, you can do that play and also maybe bring a reverse around or something, get the defense flowing one way and hit them out the back end on the other. But we haven't seen that yet. Maybe they're setting that up for the second half. Second attempt. Again, Nash has to scramble to get back to the line of scrimmage. Zach Smith, number 42, the senior from Altoona, Alabama, with the tackle. I'm a little surprised, Bob, with this decision not to go for a touchdown here or, or at least a field goal with Brandon Bridge, the way he's been able to throw the football down the field. They came out and just ran the ball and were content to go in the locker room at halftime down 35 to 16. They will let the time expire as the two teams head to the locker room. All Corn State with an impressive offensive display led by their quarterback Brandon Bridge putting 16. But the Mississippi State Bulldog offense has been impressive in its own right. And we've got a 35-16 score. Here's Jim. 
Coach Mullen, your offense looks sharp, but your defense gave up a few big plays. Why? Yeah, just big plays. They're making plays. Their quarterbacks made a couple big plays, and, uh, you know, their guys beat us in man coverage. We're, we're not playing real well on defense. I, you know, I'm not real happy. We're not getting after. I don't see the energy, the excitement we've played with the last couple weeks on defense. But we'll get that fixed. I promise you that. Offensively, using both your quarterbacks again, how do you change what you try to call based on who's at QB? Well, we don't really change our game plan, but one thing, we wanted to come into this game. We had a set plan. Chris is going to play the first two series, Tyler the next two, and we got that done. they both done a nice job managing the offense, and uh, but we'll see. We're going to talk about the rotation here at halftime. All right, thanks, thanks. Coach. Dan Mullen heads to the locker room to talk to his Bulldogs. We have reached an efficient in Starkville, Mississippi. Fred Hickman with all the scores and highlights, so stay with us. Our halftime score, Mississippi State 35 and Alcorn State 16. Take a look at our first half numbers, our Regents Bank summary. Two things stand out for me. Alcorn, 7.4 yards per play and an advantage in time of possession. Yeah, Alcorn has controlled the ball. You know, we told you they're going to milk this play clock down and try to slow this game down. Well, they've done that. Now they just need to put up some more points on the board. 35-16 is our score here in Starkville, Mississippi, as we get set for the start of the third quarter. All corn to receive. And it will be a touchback. Earlier, down on the field, Jen caught up with Ernest Collins. Coach Collins, quite a response from your team. You said you'd have to withstand the first few punches, and you did. How was your team able to move the ball so well offensively? Uh, we, we got a good football team. And, uh, you know, our quarterback, he's young, but he's a real heady guy. and, and uh, we just got to protect them and just keep doing what we do. Not worry about what they're doing and how they're doing it. We just got to keep running our offense and running our defense, and we'll be okay. What was your message to the team at the half? That may have been it, I guess. Just keep playing ball. Just keep playing. We got to keep playing and keep playing. That's nothing else. Thanks so much. Good luck, second half. And the Braves offensively come out first and 10 of the 20 with true freshman Brandon Bridge, who had a terrific first half. And a running play to Caldwell to start things. Jock Caldwell gets the start here in the third quarter ahead of Gabe Nash. And there is a penalty flag on the play. Flag on the play. After the play was over, personal foul, number five with the defense, contact out of bounds. You see, it's just a late hit out of bounds here by Mississippi State. And the most important drive of any game is the first drive of the third quarter, Bob. It's when you go in to the locker room, you make your adjustments, you kind of get a feel for what they're doing to you defensively. So for Alcorn State, big, important drive right here. So a penalty moves the football out to the 40. Five yard line, first and ten. And this one is incomplete. Now we should point out as that had a high arc to it, the wind has picked up considerably. And Alcorn is going into that wind here to start the period. They are going into that wind, and you got to be careful with the types of throws you make when you're going into the wind. You know, as when I played as a quarterback, you get you go in the field at, before the game, you get a feel for how that wind is blowing and what type of throws can you make that long out route? Can you make that deep pass down the sideline going into the win as opposed to the win at your back? 
second and ten. Bridge in the first half was eight of 13. One touchdown pass. And this one behind the intended receiver, Simon Collier. And just a little miscommunication there by Bridge and his receiver, Collier. A dramatic difference on first down. Yeah, this is where it's at for Alcorn State. The key to their success offensively is getting some yardage on first down. As you see, they've aver averaging one yard on first down, Bob. That puts them behind the eight ball all game long. But their salvation has been the ability to spring the big play on Mississippi State. It has, and that's that goes right back to their quarterback, Brandon Bridge. He's been their big time playmaker running and passing. Penalty flags stop this play. SEC crew headed by Kenny Williamson this afternoon here at Starkville. Dead ball foul, delay of game, offense number seven. Five yard penalty, it remains third down. And that goes into the little nuances of playing quarterback and learning the position as a young guy. We talked about it in the first half, Bob, where he had a delay a game, you know, has another one here in the second half. These are the little things you have to pick up on when you're a quarterback. Be around, you have to be aware of what the defense is doing, but also be aware of play clock and little things like that. Mississippi State is offside. Free play here for Alton. And an incomplete pass. K.J. Wright with the pressure. K.J. Wright had five Offside. tackles in the first On half. On the defense, number 42, five-yard penalty, repeat, third down. And it is these types of penalties, a personal foul, mm -hmm. an offside, right. as Dan Mullen was upset enough at his defensive unit at halftime, as he told Jen, he's not uh, any happier now. He's certainly not any happier, Bob, and I'm sure they went in, Dan talked to them at halftime, made some adjustments about eliminating these big plays, and then they came out in the second half on the first drive, and they're keeping drives alive for Alcorn State now. Bridge with the throw, and it's thrown away in front of the Braves bench. Lewis, the intended receiver. A punting situation coming up. For Junior Alturo Tamayo. Chad Bumpins back deep for Mississippi State on his own 20. Into the wind, floating the Bumpus. He may have lost that one in the sun. And it's out of bounds at the 20 yard line. A high sky. A cloudless day in Starkville, 35-16, Mississippi State. The legendary Carol Shelby. I'm standing here next to one of our 700 horses. All Saturday is proudly brought to you by your independent auto owners insurance agents. Scott Field, Davis Wade Stadium, Starkville, Mississippi. Our SEC College Football Saturday, Mississippi State leading... Alcorn 35 to 16. Chris Ralph and company first and 10. Down the middle complete. Chad bumps us to the 25. Mississippi State begins this second half much like they did the beginning of the game with Ralph getting the football to Chad Bumpus down the field. So I'm sure they went in the locker room at halftime saying, hey, let's just stick with what's working. Let's get the football in Chad Bumpus's hands and let him make plays for us. A 55-yard gain puts Bumpus over 100 receiving yards this afternoon. And again, a whistle. Dan Mullen hands on hips. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number eight. Five yard penalty. It remains first down. So again, it's the little things nagging at Coach Mullen. It is, and, and these are the things you can't have. These are drive killers. You know, you get down there, you just have a 
big 55 yard pass play and you come back and offsides now you put yourself in first and long situation. Picked up on the recovery. One of the linemen has it. Down to the 20 yard line. 67 is Tobias Smith, who instantly <laughs> turned into a running back. I'll tell you, Bob, Tobias looked like he knew what to do with that thing when he got it. You know, most linemen freeze up when they get the football or even have a hard time picking it up off the ground. But Tobias Smith looks like he may have played a little running back or tight end back in his day in high school or something, but he tucks that thing away nice and tight and gets a few yards for his offense. Malcolm Taylor with a strip. Bumpers. Sets up a third and short for the Bulldogs. And this is where Chris Ralph becomes dangerous to the defense, Bob. A third and short situation in the red zone. He's he's two dimensional. You know, he can run and pass, so he can do so Mississippi State can call many things here offensively. You see they have the field spread out, maybe an opportunity for a quarterback draw for Ralph. Incomplete. Intended for Brandon Heavens. As intended for Brandon Heavens. Tribune in coverage. Ralph has had a, a very good day. First half, he was 7 of 9. 122 yards and the two touchdown tosses to Bumpins. It's, it's so impressive, his accuracy, Bob. He's came such a long way. Yes. He's worked all offseason on improving that and trying to make himself a more of a complete quarterback, and he's really made big strides. Derek DePasquale will come in to attempt a 33-yard field goal. His first field goal attempt of the season. No good. Wide left. And the defense... Under the direction of coordinator Zach Shea, bends but does not break. What is the new Sonic Good? It's our new Sonic Loaded Burgers with a bigger, better 100% pure beef patty that's loaded with tons of intense flavor. Try the Western Chili Loaded Burger with warm chili, bacon, yes. Thank you, Fred, for Chris Ralph and Mississippi State. No points on their first drive of the quarter. The field goal miss gives all four in the football. First and 10 at the 20. And freshman quarterback Brandon Bridge back to work. Lead to Singleton. They list him as the tight end split out to make that catch as we check in with Jen. Bob, let's see how the Mississippi State defense responds here because after they came off the field the last time, defensive coordinator Manny Diaz lit into them. They were spit flying. He was on them about the penalties. And I tell you what, he had the most intensity of anyone out there. I kept looking for one of the players to respond with some intensity. They didn't on the sideline. We'll see if they do it on the field. They come back with a pass to the near side. Completed to Edward Johnson. And he takes it out to the 29-yard line. Getting back to Jen's point there, Bob, Dan Mullen has talked about he wants this team to be player-led, not coach-led. He wants the peers to run the show. When a guy's not getting the job done, he wants another player to get up in the face of the guy and say, hey, you need to pick it up instead of the coaches have to do it all the time. Once you get to that point, you take the next step as a football team. Second and seven. Jack Caldwell is the setback. Bridge out of the gun. A pump fake. Buys a little time. Yeah. And take it down. Chris White from behind. Today's game is presented in high definition by H.H. Gregg. Ten thirty-five and counting. Third period, 35-16. Mississippi State and a third and long for all four. Oh, 
screen. Collier made the catch, but Mississippi State have it covered well. They did, and that was the right play call by Michael Armour right there, expecting the blitz on third and long. They run a little screen in there, just didn't get it blocked. Number 51 didn't get out there in time. Alva Shelton to get that block, or that would have been a key block. He could have got up in the seam and maybe got a first down there. Denias Timms with the tackle. And now a punting situation. Chad Bumpins shielding his eyes from a glaring sun. Bounce out of bounds near the 35 yard line. Mississippi State Bulldog football when we come back. 9.32 to go, the third. Okay, listen up. You want to know what it takes to have a big built Ford Tough event? Well, you've got to have these bad boys. Ford F Series, America's number one selling trucks. SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by Geico and by Wendy's. SEC College Football Saturday from Starkville. Mississippi State with a 19-point lead. And the football from the 36. Chris Well. Down the sideline. Incomplete. Michael Carr, third team wide receiver, true freshman from nearby West Point, Mississippi, was the intended receiver. And Mississippi State just coming out, trying to stretch the defense a little bit on first down, knowing that Alcorn State was probably expecting a run there, try to get Ralph out on the corner and get it, try to sneak in a deep pass on it. Direct snap to Perkins. Darius to the 42 yard line. Perkins in the first half had three carries for seven yards. One thing we haven't seen is the running of Chris Relf today. His outstanding accuracy on eight of 11 for 177 yards, but only two carries for three yards. Jay yeah, hadn't really had to. He's been very productive in the passing game. On third down. With a completed pass to Heavens. And that will be a first down for Mississippi State out to the 44 yard line of Alcorn. What I really like about the way Ralph is playing today is he's not forcing the issue. He's not throwing the ball into double, co double coverage. He's finding underneath wide receivers, as you see right here on the crossing route. Just take that little pass and let your wide receivers, who are the best athletes on the field, tuck it and make some big yardage for you. Mississippi State now 4 of 7 on third downs in this game. And Chris, as the coverage was outstanding, had to eat this one back at the 49-yard line. He did, and, and like you said, Bob, that was a coverage sack. You know, he had plenty of time to throw the football, but in the secondary, the Braves just had great defense, covered up all the Mississippi State wide receivers, and Ralph just couldn't find anywhere to get rid of the football. Our auto owner's insurance defensive coverage of the game. Zach Shea, the defensive coordinator at Alcorn, former grad assistant at the University of Georgia. Bumpins. To the 35, but a yard shy of the first down. We see Ralph just getting rid of the football quick here. You have some quick slants on, just trying to get a catch and run, knowing that you have two downs to get this, and you don't have to get it all 15 yards back on one play. You can go in and come and try to get it on third down. Third and two. For the first down. <laughs> Evans with his second catch of the game. Javoris Tribune the tackle. Evans a sophomore from Bessemer, Alabama. Dan Mullen's offense looking to get a little momentum moving the chains here. Bump 
Memphis takes the snap. As he continues to rack up the yardage, he's had his career high as a receiver, 137 yards. And now he adds to his impressive display on the ground. And they set the tone with Bumpus right away, right out of the blocks in this football game, getting him the ball in many different ways, reverses at playing Wildcat in the quarter, at quarterback in the Wildcat position and throwing the football down the field. So he was certainly a major part of this game plan. Chad has rushed the ball four times for 38 yards. Well, Perkins pops it up. It's recovered by Alcorn. And a touchdown saving tackle made by Chad Bumpins. Coming up with the football linebacker, Josh Cragen. Well, Josh Cragen, one of the best defenders on that Alcorn State defense, and they just blow this play up in the backfield. It never got started, never had a chance, but when you're the running back, Perkins, you have to just try to do whatever you can do to hold on to that football, and I know it's a, a tough exchange while you're being hit, but can't have those type of turnovers. First turnover of the game goes to a team that can create a lot of turnovers. Alcorn State comes up with the fumble recovery and a 28-yard return, and that gives the Braves the football at the Mississippi State 35-yard line. Complete to Johnson, and Edward is knocked out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Now the first down for the Braves. Yeah, the Braves got a little lucky there. Bobby Johnson and Collier ended up running the same route there, but uh, Johnson was able to step in front and make that play and get a big first down. 14 yard pickup of the top receivers of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, 82, Edward Johnson, senior out of Natchez. A 60 man traveling squad at 38. It ties to the Magnolia State via high school or junior college. For the Braves, and this pass intended again for Johnson through his hands. In and I like what Alcorn State has done in the second half. They made the adjustment. They went in and talked about how they were getting no production on first down. So they came out the second half. They're starting to throw the football more on first down, trying to keep themselves in more manageable situations. Second down and 10. Jock Caldwell remains in its tailback. Gabe Nash had a big first half against Manny Diaz of the Bulldogs, but he did suffer what appeared to be a shoulder injury in that first half. Caldwell has been in there here in the second half. Bridge gets to that corner. A.J. Wright is there to escort him out of bounds. K.J. Wright, great pursuit right there, chasing down Brandon Bridge. If he turns that corner, he's got some sideline to make some yardage right there. But K.J. Wright, excellent job of hustling over there and making that play. Third down. Third and Get the time request in before the clock hits zero. Play of game on the offense, number seven. Five-yard penalty. It remains third down. So the answer is no. Right. And, and that's the third one, Bob. But that's what Manny Diaz's defense does to a young quarterback. He gives you a lot of looks, a lot of movement on that defense, trying to confuse you. And you can see Brandon Bridge at the line of scrimmage just trying to sort all this out and get his guys going in the right direction and just taking too much time doing that. They switch from a three-man front to a five-man front and bring the heat. The pass is going to be incomplete at the goal line. Singleton, the intended receiver. There is a penalty flag. Offside, defense number 42. Five-yard penalty, repeat, third down. 
42 is Zach Smith. And Dan can't believe it. You know, Mississippi State defensively just giving them a lot of plays. You know, a lot of more, a lot of opportunities here in the second half with late hits and offside penalties. And there they had them stopped on a third and long. Now they give an opportunity to come back and convert it again. goes down again the Bulldogs just overpowering the Braves offensive line you'll see it here they are Bob and what they're doing is they're bringing one more guy than Alcorn stake and block as you see number 50 Chris White is a free blitzer what has to happen there is Brandon Bridge has to see that they don't have guys blocking to get himself picked up and throw that ball out of there on his side adjustments and his hot routes Tamayo attempting a 45 yard field goal The snap was not a good one. And the holder, Smith, didn't seem to get it down in time. So the low kick derails this effort. As you said, he kind of bubbled the snap there a little bit and threw the timing of the kicker off just enough where he wasn't able to get the loft on the ball and get it over the outstretched hands of the Mississippi State defense. 3.55 to go. Here in this third period. Tyler Russell. Tyler Russell back in at quarterback now for the Bulldogs. <laughs> Sacked at the 25 yard line. Caesar Cobb. Back up defensive end. Well, it looked like another coverage sack here, Bob, and actually no one blocked to the defensive end. You see the offensive lineman kind of stumbling it out there to make his block. So just unfortunate for Tyler Russell to come in and trying to get something started through the air, and I got to pick up that defensive end for him. Russell steps up in the pocket. Intercepted their midfield. Tribune. And a penalty flag. The number one rule for a quarterback is never throw late down the middle. And you see Tyler Russell just kind of holding, holding onto the ball, and he's late down the middle. What happens is those safeties have time to read your eyes and adjust to where you're going During with the, the football. During the return, there was a legal block below the waist on the defense, number 58. The penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Javoris Tribune with the interception. And that is his first, the ninth for the Braves this season. Russell is picked off for the fifth time this year. Yeah, and you see Tyler Russell on the headphones talking to Les Kenning, I'm sure, up in the booth. And Les is telling him what I just said. Look, I know you're a young player, and these are the type of things that you learn. You can't hold on to the football and throw it down the middle. If it's not there right away, find your check downs. Just keep the chains moving. Don't force anything down the middle late. Three drives for Mississippi State and Les Kenning. They've had a field goal, a fumble loss, and an interception. And you see the another turnover in favor of the Braves, and now the pass is complete. And stretching out to the 31-yard line as Jerry Salas makes the catch. And once again, it's first down passing in the second half. They're not getting anything on the ground game. State is loading up the box and making him throw the football, so Brandon Bridge is going to have to win this game or get him back in this game with his arm. It has been a scoreless third quarter. Caldwell. To the 29. Today's Wendy's texted in question. The best NFL quarterback to come out of a Mississippi college. Favre. Manning. McNair. Text your answers to South at 76884. Message and data rates may apply. 
Brett Favre's nephew, Dylan, being redshirted the quarterback this year by Dan Mullen here at Mississippi State. Bridge gets away. Escapes another time. And he's got the first down out of bounds at the 20. And you see the tremendous athletic ability. This is a broken play. No one blocks the defensive end. He's a free rusher, but Brandon Bridge is able to make a couple guys miss, two or three tackles you see him breaking there, and just using athletic ability, like we said, much like a Cam Newton from Auburn is able to do in the SEC. And Cam Newton on this field a couple of weeks back had a huge game as Auburn came in here and won 17-14. Under center, Caldwell gets the handle. And a nice run, one of the rare plays on first down that's gotten that Alcorn any yardage. It sure is, and Bob, the theme for this team is they just keep chopping wood. Ernest Collins, when he took over this program last year, they started out the first two games getting outscored 100 to nothing. Yes. So the, and he just keeps preaching to his team, just keep chopping wood, keep chopping wood. And now this year they start the season 3-0. and So these players have bought into his theory and his beliefs, and you can see them gaining confidence throughout this game. And this is Alcorn's first game against an SEC Illegal team. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players lined up in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Ernest Collins has his ball club 3-0 for the first time since 1993. And you look back over the history of this football program, their biggest win came in 1978 when they knocked off Central Michigan. Uh, they went to the playoffs as a 1AA member when McNair was the quarterback. Caldwell. Look at him keep his balance. Terrific effort with the 13. And you see what passing on first down does. It's normally a running down. When you come out and you start passing on the first down, on first down, you use the pass to open up the run instead of vice versa. So now you see State is starting to play the pass a little bit, and they're able to slip some runs in there. Second down. In the first half, Alcorn averaged about 0.2 yards, so a couple what, a foot <laughs> on first down, a couple inches. But here in the second half, they're averaging 7.2 yards in the on first down. Incomplete, just off the fingertips of Johnson. That would have been six. And that's a throw that just got away from him a little bit, but great pressure by Pernell McPhee. Had him open on the slant and the ball just sailed. He had the pressure right in his face, or he probably would have been a little bit more accurate with that throw. Third down and three. And now a timeout has been called. Timeout, Alcorn State. First timeout this half. This is a 30-second timeout. It comes with 33 seconds remaining in the third period. We mentioned that the Braves are the leaders in the Eastern Division of the SWAC, and they will take on Texas Southern. Keep your eye on that October 16th game at Grambling State. Grambling is the leader in the Western Division after the first month of the season. Yeah, that should be a heck of a matchup. Two great teams going at it, and, you know, certainly for Alcorn State, they're getting some good experience playing against an SEC football team here today. But I think the overriding philosophy of Coach Collins that you talked about is just keep playing the game. And that's what it's all about. As a football team, when you take over a program, as Ernest Collins has done here in his second year, it's just you got to get guys to buy into your system and believe in what you're teaching. And he really believes this is going to be a good football team, and he can get them to where they want to go. Guys just have to buy in and believe and keep, keep chopping wood, like he says. And a big play by Pernell McPhee. Yeah, Pernell McPhee, Bob, is one of their most 
talented players on that defensive side of the ball, and he's made two big plays here, probably pre preventing a touchdown pass on the play before by putting pressure on quarterback Brandon Bridge. Now you see him here in the backfield just blowing up the run play before it can get started. Big fee. All second teamer in the SEC last year. Hasn't been racking up the stats like he did a year ago, but still an impact player that uh, everybody knows about. And Manny Diaz jogs with his defensive unit to the other end of the field as we get set for the fourth quarter. Three in the books. A few misplays, keeping the score right where we were at halftime. Mississippi State 35, Alcorn 16. Today's game summary is brought to you by Jeep. As you look at the numbers, very good offensive numbers for the Braves. Mississippi State's quarterbacks, Ralph and Russell, have combined for nearly 300 yards in the air. And, and that's been the difference is the passing game for Mississippi State, and that's kind of what they wanted to work on. Dan Mullen told us we want to work on our passing game today, especially from the pocket, and they've done that. Alcorn comes back to start the fourth, fourth down and six. Incomplete and nearly intercepted KJ Wright. We saw that last week against Georgia. He had a couple of opportunities, three in fact, that could have been interceptions and another chance here. We sure did, Bob. And KJ Wright is a guy who's all over the field. As you see, Brandon Bridge taking another big hit by Chris White, but he did get rid of the football quick there. Just KJ Wright was reading the eyes and was able to get his hands up and knock that ball down. KJ Wright and the defensive unit holding on fourth and giving the ball back to the offense at the 16. Well, gives to Ballard. Let's take a look at our Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff leaders. You look at Ralph, an outstanding. 11 of 15 and a career day for Chad Bumpins with nine catches and 133 yards. <laughs> Ballard looking for a hole. It's back at the line of scrimmage. Malcolm Taylor, number 90, making the play for. Alcorn State. And that was a good play by Malcolm Taylor right there. He's the defensive end, so he has outside contain. They wanted to get the ball outside of him, but he set the edge right there, made the running back, cut it back up in the middle, and let his linebackers come clean it up. First team all strike a year ago. Valley breaks through. Touchdown. Vic Ballard, his third touchdown of the game. Sean Brockley with the PAT. Vic Ballard continues to rack up the points. His third touchdown of the game. And Mississippi State leads it 42 to 16. Embar CC College Football Saturday is brought to you by C-Max, by Jeep, by Academy Sports and Outdoors, and by Cellular South. Vic Ballard has now scored nine touchdowns this year, rushing and receiving. He's scored nine of Mississippi State's 19 touchdowns in 2010. And the Bulldogs now lead it 42 to 16. All torn ready to receive the kick. Dawson called well to deep men. And this is Doss from the 13.
to the 27. Our sprint epic play of the game. As we take a look at this, you see the left guard, Quentin Salisbury, and the fullback, number 23, Sylvester Hemphill. Nothing happens on a big-time running play without great blocking. You'll see Hemphill seal it down, and you'll see number 55, Quentin Salisbury, kick it out, and it just creates an alley for the running back, Vic Ballard, to get up in. At that point, it just becomes a foot race, and you see Ballard, he puts that head back, and it's off to the races. So another challenge for the Bulldogs defensively to end their day strong. Dan Mullen uh, very upset, as he mentioned to Jen, going off the field at halftime about the lack of focus and intensity he felt in his defensive unit. They've got 15 more minutes to work here as we start the fourth quarter, 42 to 16. And we have a new quarterback coming in for all corner, ball that foul. is Darius Smith. Play of game, offense number 11, five yard penalty. It remains first down. Another true freshman from Texas Mansfield, to be exact, Darius Smith has very, had very little playing time, has thrown two passes and is 0 for 2. Out of bounds at the 24. But Brandon Bridge will be long remembered as a rising star in the SWAC after his performance today. He sure will, Bob, and he's done so many big things here today, and this is good for his confidence. A young kid to come into this environment and make big plays against a really, really good SEC defense. He threw the football well, made big plays with his legs, and, and it's a good time to get him out of this game. This game's in hand. He's taking some big shots. You don't want to get him hurt as he continues through the season. flag at the end of the run as Caldwell took it straight ahead. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 93. The penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Jeffrey Howie a man caught with the face mask penalty. A junior from Pennsylvania. We'll see it here. And once again, just another defensive penalty that's going to upset Dan Mullen even more. Even though it's late in the game and you've got it in hand, you've got to continue to play fundamentally sound football. You can't just reach out there and grab a face mask. They've now had seven penalties for 65 yards. First of 10 from their own 38. Caldwell again. And a tough yard to the 39. A 42-16 Bulldog lead. As the Braves have it second down. And nine, officially listed as second and 10 at the 40, a 39 yard line. Complete. And a first down. That is Dante Parker with his third catch of the season. 5'9 sophomore from Arlington, Texas. Yards in Mississippi a pick up in the Bulldog territory at the 45. And an opportunity to get some good repetitions here for another freshman, as you mentioned, Bob, Darius Smith, at quarterback, getting a chance to come out in a SEC game and see what he can do. They have shuffled the order of their quarterbacks. Terrence Barnes, who started the season, is now the third-team quarterback. And Darius Smith getting some very important playing time here in the fourth quarter in Stockton. Calls his own number. And a penalty flag. Oh, 
Come on, Dave. Whoa, whoa. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players in the backfield. Penalties declined. Second down. Second and ten. Smith under center. Caldwell. Trying to get to the outside. An enrollment of 3,600 students. You see where we are here in Starkville. Well, Lorman, Mississippi. It is right down there in that corner near Louisiana. And these two schools have met in all kinds of sports over the years, except for football. This is the first ever matchup between the football teams. On third and ten. Incomplete at the 28. Haki Reed was the intended receiver. A key, a senior from Fayette, Mississippi. You see good arm strength right there by, by number 11, Darius Smith. He's, he's a, a young quarterback, as we mentioned, but he also shows he has some skills to be able to throw and run just like Brandon Bridge did. Obviously not to the extent that Bridge was able to do it, but he's, he's certainly got some potential and some talent. So here comes Tamayo jogging in to punt the football. Back at his own 40. Fair catch by Leon Berry at the 15. And a timeout, 30 yard punt. 10.06 to go in the game. Mississippi State leads at 42 16. What do you ladies got there? Moody's apple pecan chicken salad and a baked potato. A BLT cob and a chili. For one price, you can pick two things. What do you got? This. Oh, only one thing? I have something else. My pookie bear, you're my pookie bear, my pookie Now you can pick two at Wendy's. Any half-size salad and one of seven tasty options for just $4.99. You know when it's real. Thank you, Fred. 42-16 Mississippi State. 10.06 to play here in this fourth quarter. And first down and 10 now for the Bulldogs with Tyler Russell at quarterback. And the give is to Robert Elliott. For perspective on the Bulldog Day, here's Jen. Bob, the storyline you guys have talked about all game long is basically how this Mississippi State team would respond after a big win against Georgia last week. Dan Mullen said, if we don't come out and play hard and get a win, then we've essentially lost everything we won in that game against Georgia. And Tim, be interested to hear what you think. The offense, that might get a thumbs up, but the defense may still have some work to do. And a penalty flag on this play. I think it may be the difference, Tim, of playing hard versus playing well. Prior to snap, false start, offense, 67, five-yard penalty. It remains second down. And, and that's exactly what it is, Bob. You know, they've talked about cleaning things up offensively, the drop balls, you know, the penalties, the, you know, INTs, any, all those kind of things. But today, defensively, it was the offense cleaned their stuff up. Now, defensively, they're going to have to go back and work on the, what they did. And they committed a lot of penalties, uh, offside, I mean, offsides and late hits and those type of things. So there's a lot of, lot of work still left to do for this Mississippi State team. Russell throws out to the 20-yard line, the pass is caught. This is Sam Williams, a redshirt freshman from Brandon, Mississippi, getting uh, some game action, and that's his first catch of 2010. Nice grab, too. One-hander pulled it back in. 
third and 11. Pressure. Incomplete. Evans, the intended receiver. A little pressure applied there by Alcorn State defensively, and you hadn't hadn't seen a whole lot of that tonight or today, and they hadn't got to the quarterback many times, but that time they bring an all-out blitz and were able to, to get to Tyler Russell before he was able to deliver the football. And number 91, Patrick Christians, was the freshman defensive lineman who came crashing through on Russell. Punting situation. Keith yeah. Hutchins. And the fair catch is made at the 38-yard line by Edward Johnson. 9-0-1 to play, 42-16 Bulldogs. Embarrassing to say, delicious to eat. It's the Super Rudy Tutti Fresh and Fruity starting at $4.99. It's value covered with fruit and whipped topping. IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. So, Benny, I'm proud of you. Welcome to the 21st century. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> You're an E-Trade, hunting down stocks, bonds, ETFs. Oh, I love ETFs. Look at you. Why, why don't you show me your portfolio? I'd love to. I, I already logged out. Oh, no, it's easy, actually, to get back. See where it says history? Well, there's a history? Yeah, it will take you right back to the site that you were just on. Well, the, so. That last site. And now, cycle complete. The male wildebeest returns to propagate the herd. Can you forward me this link? E-Trade. Investing Unleashed. We are back in Starkville, Mississippi, and our old Charlie spans of the game. Forty-two sixteen, Mississippi State, nine oh one left. And the Braves have the football at their own thirty-eight. Smith throwing incomplete at midfield. Jerry Salas, the intended receiver. It looked like that ball was tipped a little bit. He has a, had a nice uh, opportunity for a bootleg and hit a crossing route right there. And looks like the uh, linebacker number 45 was able to get a hand on it and uh, just knock it off target. Leon Berry had a huge kickoff return for a touchdown, officially 97 yards. That at the end of the second quarter. And a chance for some of the second and third teamers to get some playing time here in the fourth quarter. And a big hit. Here's another penalty flag as Doss is slammed down at the 37. Speaking of that Leon Berry kickoff return, here it is. And th this was a backbreaker for Alcorn State. Alcorn State was kind of in this thing at this point. They were moving the football really well, and Leon Berry just broke them down with this play. A holding penalty. Leon Berry is the all-time leader in kick return yardage here at Mississippi State. Third and ten, Third and ten for the Braves. 8.28 to play. Caldwell, no gain. You mentioned Tim the penalties. SEC leader was Mississippi State. The fewest penalties coming into this game, but today, they have more than doubled their season average, 70 penalty yards. And, and that's what drives coaches crazy. You know, you come into a game where you're playing an opponent that's not an SEC team, and you feel like you should come out and dominate and have a clean football game, and you come out, you have a lot of penalties and those type no. things. It's just upsetting to a coach and Dan Mullen. Alturo Tamayo is in to punt the football. And after that refreshing break on the sideline, Leon Berry is back in to return it. This one over his head. He'll let this one bounce, and it goes out of bounds near the 15. 
Our Polaris hardest working player today. Hard to deny Chad Bumpins. Well, he's certainly been working hard, Bob. They have used him in a multitude of ways. He had a career high, as you mentioned earlier, 133 yards receiving. He has big plays on the ground and rushed for 38 yards. So he was just used in a lot of different ways. And made tough catches and a big time playmaker for this Mississippi State offense. Chad Bumpus, there's his receiving numbers. And the Bulldogs go to work on offense. Tyler Russell in the quarterback. Perkins the setback on first and 10 from the Bulldog 15. And Russell to the 22. Tyler Russell, 6'5, 225. Great size, you know, great arm strength, all, all the things you look for. He was a, like you mentioned earlier in the telecast, Bob, he's a big time recruit coming out of high school. So they have, feel really comfortable with the quarterbacks they have here. And also Dylan Favre, Brett's nephew, is on the roster. And they have some excellent quarterbacks that, that'll move this uh, program into the future. Russell to the 24. Mm -hmm. Kenny Roby made the tackle for Alcorn. And the Bulldogs content to grind it out here. This game, a 42 to 16 spread at the moment. Third and one. Is a first down for Perkins. Another out of conference game for Mississippi State next week as they go to Houston to take on the Cougars. And that will set up on October the 16th. A big game as Dan Mullen, the former quarterback's coach at Florida, returns to Gainesville. Yeah, that'll be a big emotional week for Dan Mullen, returning back to a place where he had so much success. Two national championships he was able to win there as part of that staff. So certainly will be a big time game for emotions for Dan Mullen. Crawling out to the 33 is Perkins. Dan Mullen was telling us in the meetings. Take a look at another rising star in Brandon Bridge. How he loves to divide the season into thirds. And Mississippi State got through the first third, two and two. They did, and that's you know that's kind of the way you break down a season is how can we, what kind of success can we have in each third of that season? And they were able to you know do, go two and two. They had some tough teams, LSU and Auburn, in those that first part of the season and that they lost to, but they have a lot of potential going forward. Big game. Sam Williams. A 38-yard game. And there you see the accuracy, the arm strength of Tyler Russell getting the football out to Wilson, and he just makes play. You know, made a play after he caught the football. He was able to turn it up, break a tackle, and and get some big-time yardage out of it. And movement will negate this play. Dead ball foul. Ball start. Offense number 55, five-yard penalty. It remains first down. You see, we take a look there at Edward Johnson. He's been their go-to guy in the in the SWAC conference. He's made a lot of plays. Been a three-year starter for him. One of the leaders on that wide receiving core. And didn't get an opportunity to make a lot of plays today. But they'll, uh, you know, they've gained some experience and learned a lot playing against a tough defense like Mississippi State. Inside the 10, pushed out of bounds at the 6. 14-yard pickup, first and goal, Bulldogs. 
you know, the running game for Mississippi State, Bob, is one that last year Anthony Dixon was the workhorse. He carried the load for this football team. And this year, it's been more running back by committee with Ballard and Elliott and Perkins and those guys. But they've done a good job of handling their roles and, and being do, and doing a good job of being ready to play when their numbers call. Perkins to the one yard line. Mississippi State has racked up 560 yards to date in total offense. This will go down as one of the highest single game totals in Bulldog history. In the season opener, Dan Mullen's club turned up 100 and, uh, 569 yards against Memphis and 49 points. And seven more would match that score. They can get it on this drive, and it is a touchdown for Perkins. Two forty remaining, Sean Brockley to attempt the PAT. Forty nine sixteen. You see the touchdown here. It's just power running, go line offense, the offensive line doing a good job of handling all their guys and giving Ladarius Perkins a lane to find it to, to put it up in there and get a touchdown. First touchdown today, and first touchdown of his career for Ladarius Perkins. He came out of Greenville, Mississippi, to Starkville, a football and track star in high school, and he's got the touchdown. Ten carries, 48 yards. And you mentioned how good Mississippi State has been as far as their offensive production. They Bob, another stat that's pretty interesting. On third down for the season, they were converting at 37 and a half percent today, 63 percent. So. Great job of cleaning a lot of things up that they wanted to work on offensively. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining. And the Braves will get another crack at it here. A gamely fought effort by Ernest Collins and the Braves here this afternoon. Tavoris Doss on the return. And he brings it out to the 30 yard line as we check our Z Max performance recap. And these are the two guys, Tim, that you've been talking about. Career highs for Ballard on the ground and Bumpus through the air. And that's what you want to see. You want your running back to come out and, and play big in these games, and he did. And he had three touchdowns, and your top playmaker at the wide out position, Chad Bumpus, came out and had a career day also. So very encouraging things out of this state offense. Gabe Nash here in the second half to speak of. Nash was their leading ball carrier uh, coming in. He did ding his shoulder, but we received no word on whether he would be unable to continue or able to continue. So Jock Caldwell has been the, uh, the big ball carrier in that lone setback transfer from uh, Louisville. Became eligible to play just four days before the opening game as a sophomore. Third and long. 
And you mentioned Jock Codwell, Bobby. Transfer from Louisville, as you said, but he's a guy that they will play in a lot of different positions, a running back, a slot wide receiver. So he's he's a guy they have high hopes for in the future. And despite the scoreboard 49-16, I'm sure a big time learning experience for these Braves. Yeah, these Braves, you know, hold their heads up high. They've played a great game here today. They've came in and, you know, should should build off this. They've had, you know, players make plays against an SEC style defense, and for Ernest Collins, only only encouraging things should come out of this game. Ball over to the outside. And into Mississippi State territory at the 48. You see the athletic ability of Caldwell right there, and also the smarts. You know, he, this game's well in hand, only 40 seconds to play. He had a lot of pursuit from that state defense coming at the end of that play, and he just took a knee, and no need to take a big shot right now. Final seconds here. Big hit coming through by Steigers. And that will be the ball game. Dan Mullen heads to midfield to shake Coach Collins' hand. And no doubt some words of praise for his ball club. Oh, I'm sure Dan Mullen is telling him his club did a great job and to Good luck the rest of the season, those type things, because Coach Collins has a heck of a football team there in the Southwest Athletic Conference. Down to the field and Jen. Bob, it is our players' hardest working player, Chad Bumpus. Chad, it seemed like the plan was to get you the ball in a lot of different ways at the beginning of this game. What did the coaches tell you about that as far as what they were looking for from you? Well, we just put in, we put the Wildcat in this week, and Coach Mullen just said we're going to come out throwing the ball, and he just told the receivers to be ready, basically, and he just happened to call a lot of plays, and I, I was open. So you just started working in the Wildcat this week? Yep. He um, he texted me Monday evening and asked me how I felt about taking snaps. So I, that's when I found out. I'm guessing you were excited. Yeah, very excited. <laughs> um, well, what do you feel that you did well? Career day for you receiving, caught two touchdown passes from Chris Ralph. What were you doing well out there? I, they made my job easy. All I had to do was run down the field. The O-line did a great job protecting. Chris Ruff put the ball where it needed to be. All I had to do was catch the ball and run. I mean, I didn't really do much. You make it sound so easy. Congratulations, Chris, on the win. Thank you. Chad. Sorry, back to you guys. Our final score today from Starkville, Mississippi, the Bulldogs run their record to 3-2 and two as they knock off all four and 49 to 16. Join us in two weeks from our ACC football coverage. It begins at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on Fox Sports South. For Jen Hildreth and Tim Couch, this is Bob Rathman thanking you for joining us and saying good night from Starkville, Mississippi. Bulldogs win 49-16.